For the first time in 15 months, Colorado's unemployment rate is back over 3%. Our 9 News legal analyst Whitney Trailer is back with us this morning. Whitney, what does this mean for the state and the overall labor market? Good morning, Corey. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, August employment data was just released, and our unemployment rate in the state is 3.1%, which is where we were before the pandemic. This is still better than the United States rate, which increased to 3.8% in August, which was up from July's 3.5%. So we're doing better than the US. Last month now, Colorado added 2,500 people to its labor force. Now this is the largest, essentially largest labor force we've ever had. We're at 3.26 million Coloradans who are at least, who are working or at least looking for work. So there's plenty of jobs available now. Over the past year, the state has added on average 2,200 jobs monthly. We saw in leisure and hospitality where they added the most jobs last month, while government jobs, some people will be happy about this, fell by 3,500. So in, uh, let's see, of the state's seven metro areas, Pueblo had the highest unemployment rate at 4.9%. They've consistently been high down there in, in Pueblo. Mm -hmm. Fort Collins had the lowest. And so those are my uh, primary takeaways from the August labor statistics. Interesting. So this is the year of strikes, Whitney. More strikes nationally than we've seen in decades. And Colorado is also seeing a busy year for unions as well. Right. So there's three things that I'll mention on the union front. So tonight at 5 p.m. in Denver, the Southwest Airlines Pilots Association is planning an informational picket. So it's not mm. a, an official picket, but an informational picket. And the union said, look, they've bargained in good faith for a new contract since September of 2020, and now they're just ready to strike. Just last week, another Denver Starbucks voted 15 to 1 to unionize. Across the country, this makes more than 350 Starbucks stores that have organized. This is according to uh, Starbuck, Starbucks Workers United, their, uh, their uh, union. And finally, the Service Employees International Union, which they represent uh, over 3,000 Kaiser Permanente employees in the, in the health industry, they have voted to strike if no agreement is reached by September 30th. So one common element among each of these scenarios as the unions are threatening to strike is that they're saying, look, we're not we're just seeking a livable, quote, livable wage and better employment conditions. So let's hope the parties involved can can work together. Cooler heads prevail and agree on terms because strikes are difficult for the economy. Whitney, it's just such a tough time because everything's so expensive, right? Gases, gas prices and food and everything. And so they're just saying, we're having a hard time living right now. We're working our butts off, but we just need some more money. It's a great point. And this is really a common issue between sort of ownership, management and labor. And that's really, I mean, kind of why, not kind of, this is the purpose of striking is that saying, hey, if you're not coming to the table with terms we can live mm -hmm. with, then this is our legal right, which is to inflict pain on your economy, your pocketbook, to, to make some changes. So hopefully they do. And, and it's also difficult when you're having record setting profits and then your, your workers are not being taken care of. There's that too. Well, I know time is ticking for a lot of these, so hopefully they can figure it out, come to an agreement. Really appreciate always keeping us in the loop, Whitney. For sure, good to be here.